I recently published a video about a 53-year-old 35-foot steel Dutch motor cruiser that I surveyed back in July. It was built from 4mm steel plate and the finding of the survey led me to advise my client to walk away and not buy the boat. The videos had tens of thousands of views and drew hundreds of comments, many of them suggesting the best way forward, some of which were frankly hilarious, so hang around for those. Well anyway, last week I got a phone call from the new owners of the boat and after a good chat we agreed that a follow-up video might be in order. In part, to bring us up to date on what's happened since my survey, but also to consider what we can learn from this fascinating story. So, a quick recap on the survey first. I found thin steel with ultrasonic readings well below 3mm in several places, and this was worse along the keel, which was partly filled internally with poured concrete ballast. Never a good friend of steel hulls. We also found pits over 1.5mm deep in the 4mm plate, and I made some holes in the steel plate of the keel whilst percussion testing with my hammer. The steel works needed just to get her safe and strong enough to relaunch would have exceeded my client's budget, hence the recommendation to walk away. Now the comments on the video covered the complete spectrum of possible options on what to do with the boat. From turn her into a new coral reef to oh, complete money pit to strip her out and scrap her and best of all to line her with fibreglass and expanding foam and turn her into a houseboat. Thankfully, there were also plenty more of more reasonable possibilities. So, what actually happened? Well, the new owners read a copy of my report, took a good look at the boat, and made an offer that was accepted. Having bought the boat, they assembled a small, capable team and set to work, putting in long days to get a safe and watertight below the waterline. The hull was taken back to bare steel, thinned areas were overplated with fresh steel plate, and several coats of two pack epoxy plate later, she was relaunched. The new owners have got a seven year plan to fully restore this fine looking vessel and plan to enjoy and enhance her beautiful lines and charming interior. Like most surveyors, I love messing about in boats and it's always a joy to see a boat that is down on its luck finally getting the love she deserves. So what can we learn from this inspirational story? For me there are two main takeaways. The first is how important it is for the surveyor to understand their client and their skills, plans and budget. Had the new owners been my clients, it's most likely that my survey would have concluded that this could be a great project for them to take on. But if the surveyor doesn't take the time to understand their client, they can never give their best advice. The second takeaway is that there will always be naysayers and doom-mongers on the pontoon who say, oh, it can't be done, or you shouldn't waste your time and money. But sometimes when you go on board a boat, you can feel the warmth of memories past, and you know that it's worth the effort to bring the old girl back to life. Now that takes vision, energy and belief to go down the road and it's never about the financial value, it's about the emotional value and the connection we get with boats. Yes, it can be an expensive hobby, but sometimes you just need to go with your heart, set your sights on the dream, roll up your sleeves and get stuck in. To which I say, bravo.